Welcome everyone to the 2023 Charlotte Roar. We're at Angry Beaver, early November. I got a special guest here with me, Alex Zyrus. How you doing? I'm doing good, how are you doing? I'm doing excellent. I'm so happy you're here because you got the local knowledge and I'm very excited to see this card because it includes some of the players that you know as well as some of the players that I know from New England. So this is gonna be a cool feature card. Uh, I just want to be, give a big shout out to Beast Disc Golf for being one of the feature sponsors for this tournament. They also helped with some of the added merchandise and then Andy Dialis for Die Disc for also being a platinum sponsor. Seth Brown was my assistant director. He did an awesome job. We were able to greet every player, the 90 players that played today. And again, just a big shout out to these sponsors for helping make this happen. Uh, without them, we would have been missing some of that highly added cash that you guys were all here for. So yeah. let's see who we got here today. We got Josh DiBattista, who's coming from Maine and the highest rated player. It's kind of weird seeing a thousand rated two player, highest rated player in our tournaments, but uh, there was during the MBO weekend, so it does happen. Mm -hmm. And then we have Steven Jacobs, who is a stud. He is a very good player, and you're gonna see a lot of textbook shots from him. Yeah. He ended up winning AM Worlds. Oh no, I, I didn't know that. Yep. Wow, big stat there. And then Matt Peckham, who is a Masters 50 guy, but can still hang out with us, all the pros. Yeah, his lefty's very smooth. He oh, gets the spin ratio. You're gonna right. see it. And, uh, and then finishing out the card, we also have Jake Russell. So break down this first hole for us. So Alex. hole one is gonna be a 618 foot par four. Uh, used to be hole number four, but since the new redesign, they changed the numbering on the holes. But uh, they've extended the tee pad back about 100 to 120 feet, making the hole just insanely more difficult. Um, you want to do a dead straight tunnel shot for about 400 feet and then you just try to get sneaky up here to the bucket. As you can see, there's a bunch of guardians. Just want to make sure to throw a straight shot and work your way up there for a par. Now let's see what Matt does here. So I was talking about how I was able to greet every player, right? Mm -hmm. I did not see that many pure shots while I was on this tee. And this is a hard hole one. It averaged uh, 4.9. Just to start off with a 4.9, I mean, you, you almost have to mentally prepare yourself for a hole like that. Right. Yeah, I, I started off pretty rough on this one as well, doing what John did there, so. And here is Jake Russell. He's just pulling it a little right, but he got safe. There is OB on the left-hand side that shares the fairway with 18. You have to be really cautious about. Yeah, that OB line is, as you can see, the pole's right there to the left, but it's very sneaky. It's right on the edge of that wood line. So if you hit anything and you go left, it's very possible. What a shot by Steven Jacobs there. It, it, a great pull. He's not doing anything too crazy. I believe he threw a star teaver there. Yeah, smart play. Just keep the one angle. And here's Josh DiBattista playing it right down the middle. Very good play. Wow. This is what you're gonna see from him. Very controlled, glidey mm -hmm. shots. He is a, He's one of the best main players and uh, probably the fifth highest rated player in that state. Yeah, I, um, I actually had to play with him up at the Syracuse Open. Oh, that's so cool. He, yeah. he mentioned that tournament to me. Yeah, it was fun playing with him. He's a good guy. What are you doing all the way there? Uh, my buddy Mark, he wanted to take me up there to play a tournament. Very ended cool. up finishing in like eighth, I think. All right. Somewhere around there. Well, you're back for vengeance on this one. Yeah. And here we got Jake. You can see it's a very tunnel-esque shot here and he's just gonna have to nail it to just try to save his par I mean this is gonna be tough here yeah he wants to do sort of a flip up and have it fade right at the end and as you can see it's just hard to get that that right fade with that narrow of a tunnel and this is Matt's third shot we missed his second shot we were talking but he laid up to there so he got up pretty far for yeah. his potential par or bogey save. Yeah, and where Steven Jacobs is right now is just an unimaginably good shot. Like if you can get up to where he's at, you're easy par, no worries. He had the best shot of the group and he's still a little short. I mean, that just shows you how tough this hole is. Mm -hmm. Jake Russell on his- Fourth shot here. Fourth shot. And a little run? Oh. oh, I really thought he 
nailed that line there. And I think Jake was a little starstruck because <laughs> he was a little, he might've gotten the camera jitters on the whole one and yeah. two. You're going to see here. But Josh Debo is, <laughs> he loves the camera. He's, he's, he's butter. Yeah. I called him a rock star whenever I saw him. <laughs> he does look like a yeah. Especially with that look. You'll see a few shots later. Yeah, that beard is majestic. Yeah, and Matt pulling a nice shot up there for his five save. And here's Steven for birdie. And let's see if he gives it a run. No, just kind of... Pitching it up smart. There's no yeah. need to really run hole one. You go deep. You can't really see, like, see back there when mm -hmm. you're walking to the next hole. You got a bunch of little trees back there that can just get in your way. And it's a, a good view right too. here. Yeah, slopes downward also. Mm -hmm. Fun fact: back there where you see all the dry or where the little trees are, they used to be very swampy and like water was really. Like, yeah, you can't so. ever tell that it's very dry out there. These conditions, these mm -hmm. days. But like that used to be really tough. Like if you went back in there. Well, Matt Peckham saving his bogey. I mean, he was the, the first one to uh, throw in terms of this approach. So, I mean, that's a good bogey save. He could have easily got a double there just to start, which nobody wants. Hole one bogey save is great. You're playing on par with everyone else. Yeah, I mean, this is averaging 4.9, <laughs> like we said. So, I mean, you're not losing much with a bogey. Yeah. And look at that stat. There was two birdies here on hole one. Let's see who it was. After CJ Jacobs hits this putt, great putt there. He puts pretty hard, I gotta say. So shout out to Gage Styles and Dan Easter. Daniel Easter. Getting this really birdie. well. It's really good. Especially in the front stretch, he played really well, you'll see. Especially the first hole of the tournament, you know, you have those little jitters. Here we go, we have hole two, par three, it's 312 feet. You have two different options here. You have the forehand down the left side, and you have the backhand down the right side. This is a brand new fairway. We're going down right now, uh, about a year old, not even. Uh, so you can see there's a couple of guardians coming into the right side of the fairway. I personally like to take the forehand, but I saw a couple of people take the right hand. If you get a little early going around the right side, you can get very fortunate through the trees. But if you go wide, it gets very tough. I love the options off the tee. I think it's a little shout out to John Hauk. And mm -hmm. this is a great shot by Steven with this neutron matrix pulling it right wow. down the middle. That right side never used to be that open. No. So when they opened it, it actually made more sense than going this left lane. But if you're a lefty, I think it just makes more sense that you go this route too. Yeah. He sets the angle, gives it the height, and lets it drift. Oh, he hit the very last tree. As you can see on the left side, you have these bigger trees that are defining your fairway. Whereas like the right side, you have a bunch of those smaller little trees where you can get lucky. And we based the feature card off ratings. So if you were wondering how we picked these competitors, we were able to do it just by ratings. It's the most diplomatic approach. So we did it by highest rating. So Matt Peckham was around 990. Uh, eight or something like that. Mm -hmm. Steve Jacobs was right there. Jake Russell was like 990 and Debo was 1002. Right. And Jake kind of in the worst spot you can imagine on this hole. I don't I don't even think I've ever seen a disc over there on that side. I've never seen a disc go over there. But he hit first available and he throws pretty hard. And committed. it's and it's a new it's a new fairway on the right True. side. So Good we point. have we have a lot more time to Yeah. So we'll clean that out over yeah. the years. <laughs> That was a great approach. It really though. was. I, Up to the edge of third circle. shot, that was spectacular. So he might be able to save his own. Uh, you can just there. see there on the left side with all those trees. It's not an easy hole. This average actually 3.1. So you're if you get a birdie, that's almost, you know, yeah. a stroke and a half. Debo pulling a forehand roll, which you never see from Debo. Really? Never. He was very <laughs> stuck there. Welcome to Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Matt laying up his second shot. That was a good little floaty bit. I don't know yeah. why he went to the knee there, but maybe he just thought that the height was better from the knee. I, I just, he didn't want to overcommit or something. It could be, so you see where Jake was just putting from, it was a little bit of a downhill, he's putting up, mm -hmm. and Matt's coming from the other side, so he's possibly thinking, I don't want to go deep, because uh, okay. then it'll float down the hill and give him a longer combat. So he's really shortening his 
a, a right. vertical height on them. Plus, even out at Angry Beaver is over a thousand rated. Oh my so. gosh! Speaking of a thousand rated, that was a thousand rated. That was a thousand rated birdie right yeah, there. Great putt. That's putt impressive. There. And um, not too many people got this one. We're gonna see a stat in a bit. And here's Debo to save his par with that rollout with the driver. Again, yeah, I don't ever see him with a forehand roller, so this is special for him. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jake gonna look to save his bogey here. So yeah, eight birdies. That was a double, I believe. Oh, it was a double. He put. Oh, he missed the bump. There mm -hmm. you go. Here we are, hole three. R4, 573. You start off, you go about 280, and then you start, and then you start turning right. Once you start turning right, you see these trees in the center of the fairway as we're passing by them. You want to miss those trees to get into this spot right here. If you see right there where you see the basket, that is a perfect spot. If you go any further or any shorter, you're kind of cut off. Uh, next shot, you want to throw over the OB right there on the creek, get up this hill, and have your disc just land flat. If it lands any type of hyzer, it's going down that slope. The slope up to the bucket on this one is very deadly. It's all about the tee shot and where you land, I think, on this one. If you, you have any birdie look, it has to be in a perfect landing spot. This and looks like a perfect shot. That did Steve. look very good. He sawed it off, which means it's going to miss those trees in the center very and uh, shooting one of your favorite discs, the Halo right there. Ooh, that is one of my faves. And what do you think he's throwing here, Matt? It's something in of a... Um... It was a good shot either way, a little left, but... Yeah, push a little straight. And then Debo's wanting to commit to the turn, but he just doesn't. Throws it just a little straight. Yeah, that's little most likely his leopard. Um, yeah. He really likes to throw that, but he thought he was going to get more angle on that. And our first OB for him, unfortunately. And Jake gets a good pull on that That one. is a great pull. He got past the two center trees, yeah. so you know it's a good shot. Yeah. And here you, you can see how far it takes to get up there. Jake's going to pull. As Just much as he could, cold. yeah. He unfortunately kicks left, and he's in a he's gonna be in a strange spot. You'll see. Uh, Debo left side. He went OB, so he's trying to get up to the the pole here to save his par, and he pulls it a little short. He's gonna be before that ditch. Actually. I think best case scenario from where he's at is uh, top of the stairs, mm -hmm. if not bottom of the stairs. Yep. Just and he's because, not familiar with this course, so he doesn't know exactly right. where he's throwing. Like, you guys have and so much familiarity. That was such a good shot from Steven yeah. right there. I mean, he this laces is, it. That's why I call him textbook. Like, look at this mm -hmm. shot here. He landed right where I was saying to land in the previous. That's so <laughs> crazy. And he's right there. Yeah, you know, the, both of the shots, the pro chance. The Boom. Pro chance. And he lands it flat. Yeah. Perfect. And that was his... Thank uh, you, Steven. <laughs> He threw a neutron reactor. A neutron like. reactor up there. Nice shot. I think this is his Mako right here for. Yeah, anything that turns a little left with a glide, back. that's a good shot for him. Yeah, Jake in the rough. Forehand out gives it a good ante. Does it stay? It does. It, does. it holds. Yeah. Wow, that's what a, a shot. Yeah, that's, that's a thousand rated approach there. Give it a little bit. Oh, off the chain from down there. And yeah, boom. he did his job though. Like yeah. whenever you push it a little deep, put it to the stairs and get it up there. Beautiful bird from Matt. And a great birdie from Steven. He's on a roll too. He really is. I mean, Two out of the first three. That is not an easy hole to get a birdie. That averaged 4.4, 4 and we only, we had 10 birdies, though. That's surprising there was that many birdies, including you there. Yeah. You're, you're kind of heating up a little bit, I see. Yeah, I bogeyed the first hole and <laughs> went on a little roller coaster. Well, it happens. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he just gained at least 0. 0.5.
Yeah, the entire... and he's, he's got two strokes on the, the card here, so he's feeling pretty good here. So this is one of my favorite shots here. I think this is hole four, 304 feet. What do you think of this one, Alex? This hole is a perfect forehand flex with something stable. Um, you just take the most overstable nine speed you have in your bag, you put on a little ante, let it fade down and hit the hill or hit the flat spot and skip up to the bucket. And I like his approach here with the reactor. Yep. Uh, just well, a, maybe a little too flippy. That's the only just problem Just a little there. flippy there. He's going for the hyzer off of the play. So you have a good forehand and you have a good backhand. What do you prefer on this one? I always go forehand on forehand. this one. Interesting. Yep. Just I throw my, it up easier. Yeah, I throw my luster chant firebird mm -hmm. on just a slight little ante and let the disc work out of it. it for me, it opens up the fairway, mm -hmm. opens up that gap. I believe that was an MD1 for Matt. He just left it a little short there. Looks like Jake's going putter here. Just trying to throw a straight shot. I like the putter approach. Yeah. Because on this hole, if you throw a straight shot, you're still, you can still be parked mm -hmm. on the straight shot. Yep. Yeah. Still have a look. Circle two, circle one. And Debo's like, okay, this is New England golf. This is what he's thinking here. A little downhill. Yeah. Oh, he yeah. loves this kind of stuff here. Flippy guy. Mm hmm. That's probably. That was perfect angle. How the hand. Is, uh, Mako actually does Mako as well. That'll do this about 32, 33. Mm -hmm. Definitely a look. And he's a great putter. Again, you don't reach a thousand and two without having consistent play, confident play, and he's very confident out there. And um, to give everybody a heads up on how much everybody but he's playing for the winner is going to get fourteen hundred dollars, and okay. second place is nine hundred dollars. So this is a big B tier, first year playing it, but we've added twenty five hundred dollars out of cash, and we wanted to make sure that it was a big event so people can come back next year and, and have more signups for next year. Yeah, it's a really cool event. Got to, um, I was able to play in, and um, you don't see big price tags like that come around very often. So it's really cool having that in Charlotte, especially during the off season. Next year, it'll be right after the Pro Tour Championship, so be uh, look out for that. And here are Go your, in. oh, par and <laughs> save attempts from both Steven and Jake. So they were both They OB. were both OB there, okay. unfortunately. Matt and Debo got saved there, and here's Debo's birdie. Beautiful. Oh, just a consistent putt, confident putt. Mm -hmm. And um, he even gets rolling. a little bit of that flutter. Yeah, you know, you know he's rolling back. He, he had a bogey or two, but he's coming back. Yeah, like I said, you can finish even on this course. You're finishing high, th like well over a thousand. Ooh, sneaks it in there for Steven. I like his putt. I think he's one of the better circle two putters I've seen around where he, he you'll see that he does a little trick, which I have not seen before. So stay tuned. We'll show you that. Oh, yeah. And here's Matt saving his par. So yeah, absolutely good par save. That was his uh, R Pro Zero, if anybody wants to know what putters he's putting with. One of the oldest is out there. Oh, man. He's something special. I mean, being sponsored by Innova, he's having a great year. He keeps having great years. Yeah. I mean, he's consistently at the top. So break down hole five for us now. All right, we got hole five. Probably the hardest hole on the entire course, in my opinion. It's a 400 straight uphill. Once you get to this blue marker here, you have another 300 feet. And then it starts slowly going downhill, gradually turning to the right. Your first shot, you want to throw about 400 some feet up the hill to even have a chance at birdie on this hole. Very daunting hole, and I'll just share a story right real quick. We played a triples tournament here, and we double bogeyed it. So oh. that just shows you how hard this hole can be. A triples tournament, that was. yeah. Anyways, moving on. Here's Josh shot. off the, the tee. The tee shot is so demanding. Let's see how he... Yeah. Yeah, that was great. That was his um, most likely his tee bird just getting up there. And yeah, but even still with that little bit of fade, it makes, that, it makes really? that shot, that second shot, really, really so you difficult. You really want to go a little right if you can. You want to have a little bit of a flip over or turnover. How did he sneak through all of that? <laughs> that was awesome. That was his... Uh, I, I want to say that was his stingray, or I'm not sure. 
His Stingray and his Mako are pretty similar colors. But... And Does he get the turn? Yeah, he gets the turn. Oh, that's staying straight. And, that's and beauty. He, he did the clap, so you know he mm -hmm. likes it. And a little replay here from Catch Cam Dan. He did a great job. He's feeling it today, man. He's, he really was. His stroke I is got, really, really smooth. You know, they call him the coach, the disc golf coach, and uh, this is why. <laughs> Just a really good play there, and I believe that was his star T bird, so it makes sense. Jake. It's a flippy T bird. Yeah, well, he's probably had it for you know, he's probably for had it for years, and that's why he's also a thousand rated because he has one awesome disc like that. Hey, hey look, there you are, <laughs> wearing the Charlotte Roar shirt. You gotta represent. <laughs> Very happy for this tournament. It was just so much work to put together, and I was excited to see ninety people. We were only anticipating seventy, you know, fifty people. So it was awesome to see ninety. I like Jake's uh, full throw here. He didn't pull back, and no. uh, he kind of got up there, you can know, see. That's very fortunate, because sometimes you do that at angry, and angry will gnaw your score down. Ugh. That was a great shot from Matt. He got it up around the corner. He's pushing, a, he's probably about 60, 70 feet away from the basket. Yeah. And here's Debo. Again, not really liking the forehand, but he kind of has to pitch up, it looked like, so he yeah. can just get in the middle. You were Good right that he got too much fade there. Just a little bit too much fade, and you and have Steve to Steve was in a something. perfect spot, so would you call this a perfect spot? It's a perfect spot if you have a comfortable forehand. And what for, about this comfortable backhand for him? That was really That was really, good. really good shot, but he had to get a little sneaky. Yeah, he on did. The right you side. did. You're absolutely right. He did have. So to I mean, it's still a fantastic shot. I just think from right here is the perfect landing zone, but it's so hard to get there. Mm -hmm. Averaging four point nine one. So this is the second hardest hole that you guys played, and uh, you have really two toughies with hole one and hole five here. Right. And Debo getting up there, I believe he will have a circle two look. Great up there, and um, yeah. So Jake's around two hundred. Uh, with this marker, I love that Charlotte has markers. We don't have that in New England. Uh, little course pro tip: please add little markers like that to know how far you have to go. Yeah, it definitely helps. It's a little visual, and it helps. Definitely helps a lot being in the woods too. Just because mm -hmm. sometimes it's so hard to tell how far yeah. you are from there. Yeah. All right, so here's Steve with his birdie look. That's uh, crazy. Probably forty, I want to say. <sighs> Yeah, you can't just a little right again with the the slope leaning down like that in the backside. You don't want to overcommit and have a long comeback. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get your body to do that. It sometimes. really is. And uh, Debo got a little further than I thought, so he's going to be saving his par there. That was a great approach and putt there. And then Matt, same thing. He got That's sneaky on the left safe. side twice, and he got the par. How come we couldn't do that during the triples tournament? <laughs> you have to get uh, pretty lucky out here at Angry Beavers. Yeah, sometimes. so whole five birdies. You want to take how many guesses? How many there were? Whole five birdies? I'm thinking one since it's... It's just one, man. Gage, Jeez. Gage birdied all of the hardest holes oh on gosh. this course. So that's hole one, hole five that he got. He and he's 18. He, and I think he got three, so he's rolling. He's on, he's on a pace for three down already. Yeah. Gage is setting in a crazy pace for this course, never seen before. Hole six, 329 feet. This is a start, it starts out a little bit straight. You wanna start turning at around 200 feet. You, most people will throw a backhand flip up or they will throw a sidearm flip up. Um, whichever one finishes, like if you throw a straight shot on this one, you're still edge of circle. So it's another one of those deceiving holes where you don't have to do much. Yeah, it is deceiving because it doesn't feel long, but the, you, I find myself short and you have to almost commit to a full shot mm -hmm. to get there. And it's a kind of weird off the tee. You don't see too many holes like this off the tee, I, I feel like. Right. And that tee pad is kind of pointing at that big mm -hmm. tree right yeah. here. So it brings that tree into play. And then the, the worst thing you could do is hit that tree and kick right or left. So you just really have to hit your line and just hope that, you know, hope the best. Exactly. This is Matt's bread and butter right here. Yeah, that was a great shot by him there. And that was most likely his savant. Yeah. He loves throwing the savants. Look at it just slowly come into the bucket. Yeah, could even been a star leopard because he throws that so well too. Mm -hmm. He loves the orange disc even with all the leaves. <laughs> Yeah, 
I, I, you know, you got to stick with your, your gut here, you know, still the disc that you like. And speaking of a disc that you like, here's Steven pulling a nice turnover there. I really like that approach. Oh, and the tree cake yeah, pushing it towards the bucket. that was butter, and that was his ESP comment. Oh. I haven't seen that one today. And here's Jake. Yeah. Great turn. Best pull. Oh Hits the God. last tree. That is literally so the last sad. tree you have to beat to park this all. He was literally fine. Uh, I can't. So go ahead and chop that tree down if you want. <laughs> you hear him, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just joking. No chopping. Um, unless it's a work day. <laughs> Good bid. Does it go yeah. in? He likes those little soft turnovers. Yeah, that look, that look chain height. Mm -hmm. Almost all the way. Jake. About circle two and a half and pulling it a little left. That's hard to commit to a shot like that because of those trees. If you don't, you just want to hit the gap and look like that's what he was doing. And Steven with about a 35. Oh, I haven't seen an air ball from him though. So must have missed, just misdialed or misjudged the distance or something. I don't yeah. Know. I actually remember watching this putt. I was over there <laughs> past the trash can. At least he made the comeback. Maybe you put the pressure on him and, uh, you know, he saw you. I don't know. I know that Simon gets a little flustered when people watch him on 18. Yeah, if all you have already did that to me once. In, <laughs> we all have our stories. Hey, Kilborn, it just happened to be the card in front of me was watching me. That's why I missed that putt to beat you. <laughs> oh, man. That's so funny. All right, so going back to Matt, great birdie. There's only Beautiful. six birdies on this hole, which is a very... I thought there'd be more birdies, to be honest, and an average 2.97. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of in the middle of the pack there. You're not going to get too mad if you don't get this one. This one is definitely one of the ones you're looking to get. Um, you have a 331 foot par three straight down. It's a straight shot you can think of. You have this one tree right here. <laughs> well, two of them now. You can never see that. Second. Yeah, you don't even see it. So if you can just get past those two little trees, you're golden. Just throw a straight shot, it's a little downhill. You don't have to power it. I like this hole. I think it's a good hole to have in the middle of the round just to keep your shot shapes going. He got sneaky past the two oh, trees. Beautiful. Yeah. That was just a really good shot with his, I believe that was an MD1. Got a really good, nice glide on that. And this is most likely his Malta. That was a stable disc. Really swung at the end. Yeah, and he got kind of up there. I was surprised how far he got up there. And here is Steven. That looks good. I think No, he, he hit the center yeah, tree. No. That was literally part, that was his electron soft proxy. And here is Jake. I like this shot here. It Did just- released? Does it flip? It doesn't flip. So again, a little stability there, got it. I hate him. to see it. Yeah. Especially on a hole like this where it's just literally right in front of you. Averaging 2.83, so this is the easiest hole that we've actually played so mm -hmm. far today. I'm not saying it's a must get, Yeah. but But everybody was capitalizing this People were day. getting this one. I've never seen so many scores that negative on this course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, there was some hot scores going around, especially today. We had about 40 pros out there, which is more than any other a tournament I've seen at Angry Beaver. So mm -hmm. that gives you a really good um, baseline of what a pro caliber tournament could look like there with the, even the top tier pros. Matt getting two birdies in a yeah, row. That, that's huge. <laughs> and I think so he lovely. says, hey, film that guy next. It's because he's wearing that Mako <laughs> 3 shirt. I, was, I love the shirt. I love the follow through here. Now he's feeling good. You can tell. He's uh, feeling a little more confident. And he's looking there. focused. Yeah. You can definitely tell. And here's Debo to save his birdie in the circle. I'm going to say guaranteed. Yep. Now he's back to even. Yeah, he's making some moves. He, he kind of was a little slow to start, but knowing him, he, he likes catching up. And Jake Russell taking his three, settling for par. No harm, no foul for him there. We're going to move on to Steven's par putt as well. And you want to take how many guess birdies there were on this one? Mm -hmm. I'm going to guess four. 
Oh. Four? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good we at saw guessing. Two. I'm not good at guessing. <laughs> All right, hold eight. Bring well, it down. We got a 618 foot par four. This hole changed up just a little bit. It used to go up there and swing left on a par five, but now it turns right. You want to go 90 degrees after about a 350 foot shot, turn right. And then you have another 300 foot shot where you just want to go straight as you possibly can and try to get through these trees somehow and to get up there to get a birdie. I love this hole. I think it's great off the tee because you can choose a mid-range or you can go big and try to cut off that corner. It really sets up nicely for a risk or reward type of shot. Exactly. Because if you go for it and you go to the inside of the trees, it's bad news bears. Yeah, and I really like Matt's shot here. That was his savant. He's in a weird cluster though. Yeah, like that's He didn't like, get the flare. <laughs> that cluster gets people a lot more than you would think and then Looks I like, like he's going for a little flex down the center yep he just wants to go straight he's playing the smart play I think he doesn't know the hole that right well. he he's only played it once into the gap exactly and, and he has shot. great gap shots through the middle so I think he's he's not going to bite it off too much off the tee there for no, see this is what I do I do the sidearm as well well I think it's smart if you have it and you want to bite off distance to get the three Let's see how he does it. I mean, that looks pretty perfect. Yeah, he flipped it up. Absolutely That's awesome. Prime. Oh, man. He's really, really He said it from. was lucky, but it looked perfect. Star <laughs> Wraith. That was... Whew. I wish I could do that with a Star Wraith. Um, and here's Jake Russell. That was a good shot, too. Just a little turned Just over. Just really a little bit, yeah. But that's, he was going through the gap. You could see he was trying to take off more than he could chew a little bit. And now yeah. he's going to be in a strange spot, you're going to see. Yeah. And this see, is Debo's preferred spot. I know it is. 310 foot straight shot. Oh my, gosh. Oh my goodness. Bro. Bro. That's as good as you're going to see it get done, guys. That was like 307. How close is 350 he? 350 at least. If he makes it to the little hill in front of the oh, bucket, he's, he's in the circle. Oh, he's in the circle, for sure. Look at this. Oh, yeah, he's barked. <laughs> wow, yeah. Sheesh. Wow. Debo, that shot. was very good. Probably your best shot of the day so far. I like it. And Matt put himself into a little situation. He had to swing around the trees. I didn't love this. I don't know what it was. I thought he maybe could have had more options, like forehand. I don't know, something. But Matt's not a big forehand okay. guy. He really relies a lot on the back game. And Jake is, I think that was just too hard of a throw. Like, how do you just kind of like let it tossed up there more and glide up there rather than spinning it, turning it over a little bit? It almost looked like he was going for a straight to Annie, almost. Like he was going to try to push it and then have it fade right. Mm -hmm. Kind of like he did. Kind of like yeah, I, I don't there. mind that. Like, yeah. But I thought Jake's was a little, he threw it a little too hard for that mm -hmm. spot there. Uh, wow, Matt's struggling. struggling. Man, two down and at Jake best... Jake with a big run. Yeah, at Ooh. best Matt can get a bogey. So let's let's hope that he can save the damage here with this approach. That was a good shot. Man, yeah. He's just laying it up, taking his yeah. medicine. He, he knew that he was done for on that one. Sometimes you just have to give up on a hole and just say, there's my bogey, that's it. Yeah, next hole. Yeah, so that was his birdie attempt there. I like it. Not too risky there. Yeah, you can see he shot. knows when to make the judgment call. I think that's an important part of uh, thousand rated players mm -hmm. or to be a thousand rated. And uh, Debo cleaning up the, the birdie, which not a lot of people did. Uh, let's see. This whole average 4.17 and there was four birdies, including you, buddy. He is a great job. Debo, Joe Andrews, Brandon Young, and Cyrus. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and then Matt. Cleaning up the bogey. Sorry that we had to film that for you, but um, it happens to the best of us. And Jake also getting a bogey. Hole nine, what are your thoughts? Hole nine. It is a 333 par three. The gap off the off the tee pad is the most crucial. If you can hit your angle through that gap, this hole becomes remarkably easier. It's very hard to get the distance. It goes uphill. It's probably playing around 360, 370. See, I'm glad that you said that because it does not feel 330. It's a hard get. 
Yeah, it's up there. Yeah. I thought I was going crazy. I was like, yeah, it's only 330. <laughs> yeah. They did clean out a lot on the right side of this hole. For people that like throw this flip up shot like he did, he that was getting more shot. of a turnover. Wow, what a shot! Yeah, that just kept going. Yeah, a little Whoa. tree kick pushed it near the bucket. He loves that timber. Yeah. That, that right side, they cleaned that up a lot. So now there's like a little flip up backhand you can throw. I over see there. it, but I get I get weird kicks on that side. There's still too many trees. I don't know what it is. I think this line for the feature card is just too open for yep. them that they have to hit this line. I agree with you. And Jake getting a snap Man. there. He took an ant off of that tree. <laughs> it happens. And uh, the lefty, let's see how he does it here. Taking his... Oh, I like it. Maybe a savant? No, that's the, the leopard. That's the leopard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a really good shot from him. Let's see if Jake can connect for his birdie. Come on, I like Good line. Bird. Yeah. Oh, so he's still running it. You know, he's not out yeah, of he's it. he's a very yeah. strong putter. His spin ratio is crazy. And he did very well at the Carolina Clash. I think he was fourth or something like Whoa. that. Yeah, so That's he good. played, you know, almost a thousand rated golf from what I saw that yeah. weekend against some really top tier pros. So he's he's got it. Looks like everyone's got the same putt here, battle putts. And this is the... Look at the ante that he puts here. But he released. Hey, it worked. Now, yeah. ha have you ever seen that? I don't. I've, I had to do a double take here as the editor because I, I didn't really. I thought to myself, well, he's on ante, but he ended up has a hyzer. And guess what? I tried it from circle three, and it kind of works. <laughs> it kind of works. Watch how stable it comes quickly, though. Yeah. He does it because if he. If he puts it on pure hyzer, he's going to release it on hyzer faster. Right. So that Annie's making that anticipation slower. Right. It's changing the twist of his wrist to be a slightly later. Which so is very interesting, yeah, interesting trick. I never I thought about doing and that. And it, it did work. I tried it, folks. So there's a pro tip for you. <laughs> if you're having problems with turning the key, just turn it a little bit before exactly. you put it. Exactly. It's on circle three or circle long, circle twos. I think it might work for you. It worked for Steven. You can mm -hmm. see there, that was an unbelievable burry there. Everybody's got their own little tricks to the trade, you know. It's amazing. That's what makes disc golf so cool. It's one of the best sports in the world. And this whole average 2.94, so you're going to see at Steven. least six birdies on here. We've got three people under par going into the back nine. That yeah. is incredible out here. You will not see another round filmed like this. <laughs> hey, <laughs> there I am. There you are, and making a little bit of headway on your front nine. I think you're four down or three down at that moment. Yeah. You were playing was... very good. I blacked out. <laughs> <laughs> Gage Styles was playing very well at that point too, Daniel yeah. Easter, so watch out for those guys. And thanks for staying tuned, everyone. We really hope you like this front nine. We got very exciting back nine. Angry Beaver, one of our favorite courses, both Alice and I. Uh, we can't wait for to share it with you all. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, love covering one of my home courses that I grew up on. Appreciate y'all.